Hey, Edna. Mr. Crockett, what can I do for you? What are you doing out here in the middle of the night? Saving people from alcohol, vice, and disorder. And also keeping a lookout for hot stories. You'd be surprised how much news breaks on this corner. Broken any stories tonight? Only the usual. Mayor Thomas trying to slink out of the speakeasy. Frankie Needles crashing his car into a fire hydrant. Nothing that'll get me the front page. Hey, I got a hot lead for you. Oh, what is it? I can't tell her that. It could get him in trouble. What's going on with you and Emmett? The last time I saw you, you seemed to be kind of interested in him. That was before I belatedly realized that his agreement to host my Stay Sober Society was a clever ruse to ferry barrels of hooch to his so-called laboratory. Sorry about that. Now his very presence fills me with an irrepressible urge to pick at his philosophical and intellectual foundations with every tool in my vocabulary. So you're not dating? Dating? <laughs> the mere thought of romantic involvement with that undisciplined techno-anarchist is preposterous. Good. What's Kid Tannen been up to for the last two months? Didn't you hear? It was in all the papers. I've been, uh, traveling. Well, the feds were all set to arrest Tannen on tax evasion charges. Seems they'd gotten Tannen's books from his accountant. I heard something about that, yeah. Well, the accountant disappeared, unsurprisingly. But the feds still thought they had a case. After all, they still had the books, right? Right. Wrong. The day before the trial, the books up and vanished right out of the court's evidence locker. No. Lots of fingers were pointed, but honestly, the whole town's so corrupt that it could have been anyone. Court clerks, cops, janitors. So kids walking around free? Free, clear, and laughing it up in his new speakeasy. The feds want to bring a case up against him, but without those books, they've got nothing. What was that song you were singing earlier? Do you like it? I wrote it myself. It really gets the toes tapping at the Stay Sober Society meetings. Although I suppose that could be the shakes. Would you like to hear it again? Uh, maybe later. I'll be here all night. Couldn't Kid be brought up on other charges like, say, running a speakeasy? In a perfect world, yes. But no one in town seems to care about prohibition anymore. The feds are only interested because of the lost tax revenue. Do you know anything about Officer Danny Parker? Parker? Just another soul lost to the twin vices of booze and despair. I've asked him to tell me his story for my column. Sort of a cautionary tale, but he's never in the mood to talk to me. You wouldn't happen to know anything about Trixie Trotter, would you? Kid Tannen's latest conquest? Well, she claims to be a lounge singer from Seattle, but my sources in Washington have never heard of her. I mean, honestly, Trixie Trotter, what kind of name is that? Whatever happened with that speakeasy arsonist? I was about to ask you the same question. Me? Don't play coy with me. I may not have any journalistically acceptable proof, but I know you had a hand in Carl Sagan's daring escape from the authorities. Didn't you think that Sagan was innocent? I used to, but after he escaped, two more speakeasies were torched in Colfax and Georgetown. That's just a coincidence. Coincidence? Or is our friend Carl a serial arsonist? What have you got against dogs, anyway? They're smelly, rude, completely unable to take care of themselves, and frankly, they're not very bright. If I had my druthers, dogs would be banned from public places. Harsh. It's a harsh world, Mr. Corleone. See ya. Keep fighting the good fight. Mike, you're just in time. How have you been, Emmett? I know I haven't seen you in a couple of months. 
I'm great, and I owe it all to you. Really? Yes. That argument I had with my father during our jet drill experiment gave me the incentive to finally quit that dreary court job. I've committed myself full-time to a life of science. So, uh, thanks for watching Einstein while I've been... Uh, away. It's been a pleasure. He's proven to be a surprisingly willing test subject. It's almost as if he's been working with me for years. More like decades. What's the story with the little car and all this equipment? Einstein and I are conducting a few experiments with this one-quarter scale model to work out a few hitches in my planned demonstration at the Hill Valley Expo in a couple of months. A radio-controlled car? No. Well, yes, but there'll be so much more than that. It will amaze the world. Aha! Got it! Got what? I'll show you. Ready to go, Einstein? Watch this! When this baby hits 23 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious cow flop. Einstein! Oh, get him out of here! Not to worry. I've got a fail-safe eject mechanism around here someplace. See? Nothing to worry about. Nothing. Go see if I can find something to help, or someone. Hey, Doc, how's the room? It's a little cleaner than I would have imagined for a depression era flop house. How are your investigations going? I haven't really made any progress with Trixie yet. Well, get out there and make some. If she doesn't blow the whistle on Kid tonight, he may never be brought to justice. Why didn't you tell me I'd run into your younger self tonight? Because I don't remember being out here tonight. Clearly, your interactions with my younger self two months ago have slightly altered my personal timeline. I never had the nerve to perform public experiments like he's doing. No matter, those experiments will be forgotten once I've seen Frankenstein. Frankenstein? Yes. Right now, my younger self is fiddling around out there with rocket propulsion systems for his demonstration at the Expo. The thing that'll kick off your scientific career. Exactly. Now, the rockets are a horrible idea, and I'll soon realize that they'll never work. But eventually, I'll wander into that movie theater and see Frankenstein and clear my mind. I've kept the ticket stub from that movie in my wallet ever since. See? Why? Because it's during this movie that I'll have the inspiration for my breakthrough at the Expo. It doesn't have anything to do with reanimating the dead, does it? Not the way you're thinking, no. But during that famous scene when Colin and Clive turned the wheel that raised that shrouded figure into the tower and that bolt of lightning struck, well... Let's just say more than one brain was reanimated that night. Emmett's not having much luck getting Einstein off the courthouse. I'm not surprised. Einstein's a smart dog, but heights give him the willies. What can we do? Hmm. I've got it. What? Just get my younger self distracted and I'll handle the rest. Where'd you park the DeLorean? I hid it in a DeSoto lot. Nobody's buying cars these days, so it should be safe in there. Hey, who did burn down Tannen's original speakeasy anyway? I still don't know. I'd really like to find out before we go home. I never did get a straight answer about why he came back to 1931 in the first place. It's, uh, personal. When this is over, I'll tell you all about it. I'm gonna hold you to that, you know. Can you explain all this? I'm confused. It's very simple. In the original timeline, Timeline A, the speakeasy arsonist was never caught creating one of Hill Valley's enduring historical mysteries. Okay. When I traveled back to 1931, I created Timeline B, in which I was misidentified as the arsonist and subsequently killed by Kit Tannen's goons. Einstein came with me, and somehow he ended up in the DeLorean when its failsafe mechanism triggered sending it back to 1986. Which is where I came in. Precisely. 
You travel back to June 14, 1931, creating Timeline C, a world in which Carl Sagan wasn't rubbed out by Kid Tannen. But Arthur McFly was served with a subpoena. And shot by Kid Tannen's goons. Yes. So you jump back in time six hours, creating Timeline D, saving your grandfather's life, but somehow preventing Kit Tannen from meeting his date with justice. Which is why the Tannens were so powerful when we jumped back to 86. Uh huh. So now we've returned to August of 1931, creating Timeline E, in which, fingers crossed, we'll send Tannen to prison where he belongs. Got it? Sure. Good. One question. What? Can you explain all this? I'm confused. Why are Tannins always such jerks, anyway? Uh, it's hard to say. Rogue Neanderthal genes in their DNA, perhaps. Just keep your head low, Doc. I'll be back soon. I'll keep an eye out for your grandfather. Don't worry, Emmett. I'm sure you'll get it right someday. Oh, I'm not worried about that. Right now, I'm more concerned with Einstein. What went wrong with your rocket car? I'm not entirely sure. As soon as we get Einstein down, I'm gonna go look for it. Why don't you go look for your car now? And leave Einie stuck on the ledge? <laughs> Never! Dogs are much more important than any silly rocket car. Especially one that doesn't work at all. What's up with you and Edna? A couple months ago, I could swear she was making goo-goo eyes at you. That was before my father had her stay sober society meeting thrown out of our house. Now she takes every opportunity she can get to snipe at me and my work. It's very distracting. Do you know anything about Officer Danny Parker? My pop says he's a good cop when he's not drinking. Good. Of course, now I hear he drinks all the time. You know anything about Trixie Trotter? The songbird of the Sierras? The nightingale of the north? The floozy of the foothills? Uh... Never heard of her. Man, I've definitely never snuck into Tannen speakeasy to listen to her. Have you seen that Frankenstein movie yet? I hear it's pretty inspirational. Not yet. I've been so busy with my rocket car that I haven't found the time. But I'm planning on going tonight. At least I will once I get Einstein down. So you're really going to see Frankenstein tonight? I'd hate for you to miss it. No, oh, don't worry. Nothing in the world would keep me from seeing a movie about a mad scientist with delusions of godhood. Cool. Why don't you take a break from Einstein Patrol for a minute? Maybe go see a movie or something. Thanks for the offer, Mike. When one Emmett Lathrop Brown sets his mind on a task, nothing can distract him from his purpose. And right now, that purpose is rescuing your dog. Well, I'll go off and see if I can get some help. You do that. I'll stay here and see if I can think of a way to get Einie off that ledge. Don't touch those! They're very sensitive! Sorry. Don't touch those! They're very sensitive! Sorry. Edna! What? Hey, I got a hot lead for you. Oh? What is it? Young scientist strands dog on courthouse roof. What? Look over there. Oh, for goodness sake. Mr. Brown! Please, Miss Strickland, not now. Can't you see I've got a rather delicate situation on my hands at the moment? My trial run- Trial run? Public hazard, I call it. And I'm sure my editor will agree. 
This scientific enterprise of yours represents a clear and present danger to public you safety. You know what represents a clear and present danger to public safety? Your singing voice. There's no need to get personal, Mr. Brown. Believe me, I have no intention of getting personal with you. I'm relieved to hear it. Flying cars of all the ridiculous juvenile notions. You mock notions. me, but just imagine. A world in which traffic jams and car crashes are a thing of the past. I might be more inclined to listen to you if your maiden voyage hadn't ended in a crash on one roof and a stranded dog on another. I'm working on getting him down. Heine, <gasps> how'd you get down? Clever dog. Well, fortune favors you tonight, but I warn you to be more careful in the future. Now, how to get that rocket car back down? Hey boy, how you doing? Good dog. Who sent you? Ulysses S. Grant. What did you bring me? Meat and potatoes. What's the word? Words are for wimps. Ew. Cabbage crates. Must be for the soup. Who said you were worthy? Euronymous Bosch? Who said you were worthy? The old gray mare? What will you do if there's a raid? Radio for help? Where are you going? Inglewood. Welcome to L Kid, sir. Ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure to once again present the hottest little number this side of the Rockies. And when I say my pleasure, I think you all know what I'm talking about, am I right? So let's have a big L kid welcome for the one, the only, Trixie Trotter. They say I'm crazy, got no sense, but I don't care. They may or may not mean offense. But I don't care. Out of my way, kid. I got some sorrows to drown. I am my own superintendent. My star is on the ascendant. That's why I don't care. I don't care. I don't care what people think of me. I'm happy, go lucky, and say I am plucky. So jolly and carefree. <laughs> She's no care. Pat Benatar, but not bad. Not bad. Hey, like all kid, I'm trying to entertain some people here. Hey, you! You talking to me? Yeah, jerk. I saw you making eyes at my Eunice. Oh, lay off, Ernie. He's kind of cute. You think you can just waltz in here and make a play for another fella's girl? Maybe. What are you gonna do about it, chicken? That's it! You're toast! <clears throat> Looks like you need to cool off for a few. Sorry, lady. I didn't mean to get your boyfriend kicked out of the club. Oh, water under the bridge. 
You want to keep his seat warm? Uh, thanks anyway. Excuse me, are you Trixie Trotter? That's what it says on my dressing room door. At least, it would if I had a dressing room. I really like your voice. Thanks. You should hear me when I ain't so under the weather. You're sick? Oh yeah, sore throat. That's why I'm giving Q-Ball so many extended solos tonight. I kind of wondered about that. Do you know Sister Christian? I don't do religious tunes. I don't care. But what are those? Are they lyrics for one of your songs? I haven't memorized them yet. What's a nice guy like you doing with a guy like Tannen? Oh, kid ain't so bad. He just takes some- Hey, Toots. Any chance you could sing that can-can number? The guys really love the way it shows off your, uh... Assets. <sighs> Whatever you say, kid. <laughs> and quit lazing around. I ain't paying you to yak with the drunks. You ain't paying me at all, you bum. What were we talking about again? You were telling me what a great guy kid is. <sighs> yeah, I guess he is a pretty crummy boyfriend. But until my insurance policy checks out, I guess I'm stuck with him. Insurance? Yeah. Look, I may not be the brightest bulb in the marquee, but even I know, you don't break up with a creep-like kid without something to keep him from going all crazy on you. What's this insurance policy all about? Are you kidding? There's only one person I trust with my secrets, but I ain't seen him in weeks. You don't mean... Artie McFly. Artie McFly. You know him? Not as well as I thought. Before he took a powder, Artie was tutoring me in all sorts of stuff. Etiquette, philosophy, accountant. He's a regular renaissance man. He even had one of those smart guy professor's pipes, see? Can I borrow this? Sure. I've been secretly working on my get-out-of-kid card for weeks now. But Artie's the only one I trust to check my work. You can't be too careful when you're dealing with a maniac like Kid, you know. Hey, you can trust me. Come on, what's the dirt you got on Kid? Nix on that. I ain't spilling nothing till I talk with Arthur Mc... Oh, F-L-Y. Hey, if I arrange a meeting with Artie, could you use that insurance of yours? Use it? Heck, if what I'm sitting on pans out, I could send that bozo all the way to the big house. I'll see what I can do. Break a leg out there. Thanks. She's supposed to turn on Kid Tannen tonight? Okay, Doc, if you say so. I don't care. It's the lyrics to her song. Hey. Back off, kid. I'm trying to entertain some people here. Way down in Louisiana, down in New Orleans. Eh, man, maybe not. <laughs> hey, I do the singing round here. Hey, I know you. You're Parker. Osford, Danny, Danny Parker, Hill Valley PD. Uh, have we met? Y you look familiar. Nah. Well, stranger, sit down and have a drink on me. I hear you've been having troubles. Troubles? Buddy, nobody knows the troubles I've seen. Want to talk about them? Do, do I? Do I? Yeah, I do. Listen, it all started when this car... Every morning, every evening, ain't we got fun? Not much money, oh, but honey, ain't we got fun? Whoopee! Yeah, now about those troubles. Oh, I don't want to wallow in misery. I came here to get happy. Hallelujah! In the winter, in the summer. So about those troubles. Troubles? Ha! <laughs> I don't want to talk about all that depressing stuff. I want to party! Whee! Shouldn't you be arresting Tannen? For what? Well, for running a speakeasy, for one thing. Well, I like this speakeasy. So there. Besides. If I arrested him, I'd have to arrest you and me and everyone else in here. 
And that's just way too much work for one little cop like me. Should you be drinking so much on duty? Probably not, but this joint ain't open when I'm off duty. See you later, Danny. I'll be here. I'm supposed to get this guy to arrest Kid Tannen tonight? Danny. You! So about those troubles. Troubles? Ha! <laughs> I don't want to talk about all that depressing stuff. I want a party! Whee! See you later, Danny. I'll be here. You in? Why not? Double zero. Seven. <laughs> the shrew didn't burrow deep enough. Checkerboard Charlie removed from the board. I guess someone jumped him. Hmm, looks like someone's about to be added to Tannen's Wall of Fame. Hmm, looks... Hmm, looks like... Hey, bartender. What'll it be? So about this, uh, portrait gallery of yours. What about it? What's it all about? Who are those guys? <clears throat> the caricatures hanging along the Wall of Honor commemorate those who are no longer with us on account of having ticked off one Irving Kid Tannen. They're the guys the kids killed? Well, of course not. They're just a bunch of guys that Kid didn't particularly like and that at a later date turned up dead. It's a, a what do you call it, a, a circumstantial coincidence. Yeah. What are you drawing? Another celebrity caricature. You drew those? Prohibition ain't gonna last forever, bub. I gotta have a skill I can fall back on when all this goes away. Think you could do a caricature of me? Sure. Presto! That really doesn't look like me. I didn't have much to work with. What's Parker's problem? Ah, Danny Parker. Now his problems follow him around like a pack of wolves. Really? Oh, yeah. Job troubles, dang troubles, psychiatric troubles, you name it. You get him in the right frame of mind, he'll talk your ear off about him. What can you tell me about Trixie? You trying to put the moves on kids, dame? No way. Good, because if you did, I'd probably be hanging you on the Wall of Honor. Know what I mean? So, is your cold all better? My cold? Yeah, when I saw you a few hours ago, you were sneezing like crazy. Mister, I ain't had a cold in over two months. Oh yeah, right. Sorry. Wrong guy. I'll have a drink. What's your poison? Peps, uh, on second thought, forget it. Suit yourself. Thanks for the talk. Next time, order a drink. This ain't no library, you know. Hey. Take a hike, squirt. Hey. Nice suit. Where'd you get it? Costume shop at the mall. Uh, I, I had it custom made. Yeah? Quality material. Who are you? Where you from? The name's, uh, Michael Corleone. Nobody. I mean, you don't know me. I, I come from a, a very different place. Come on. What's the dope? Spill it or I'll go easy, kid. From the cut of the suit, I'm thinking he might be with the Valenti gang. Is that so? Uh, yes? Prove it. You ain't leaving till you show me some boner fides. I've got a little something here that might convince you. Don't 
even blink. It's not a real gun. It's not a real gun, I swear. It's a gift from Don Valenti. See? To your family from mine, in gratitude for your continued service, J.J. Valenti. Looks like little Mikey Corleone here really is with the Sacramento boys. You got stones, Pee-wee. I like that. Have yourself a drink. On the house. Matches, put down your gun. You look like a moron. <sighs> Hey! Take a hike, Squirt. 